first of all I'm going to go through the bumblebee life cycle um, very briefly just because this gives us an idea of kind of when things are emerging and then we know what to look for. So bumblebee queens are the first to emerge. They come out in early spring so if it's warm even as early as kind of February sometimes you see them in January normally kind of February March and um, the queens will emerge and these will have been overwintering somewhere and um, so buried somewhere in a little plant pot in the soil somewhere and um, sleeping throughout the winter and they emerge in the spring and they're usually very hungry so you'll just see them really busily going around trying to feed and also find a nest this is one of the reasons why um, we talk about early nectar sources um, because usually dandelions are like one of the first things that will be in flower for bumblebees to feed on. So this is why we encourage people not to cut them. So once bumblebees have kind of settled on a nest and different species like different um, little spots so some will use like old mouse holes or little piles of leaves in the bottom hedges or even in the moss in your lawn and once they have a nest females will lay eggs and these will become the workers so the, f the queen will kind of keep looking after this for a while and then when the workers are born they kind of take over the management of the nest so in the kind of from about this time um, April May you'll start to see workers coming out and different species emerge at different times again um, and these are all female so the females do all the work in the bumblebee world and um, so they'll be going out collecting pollen and bringing it back to the nest and then later in the year um, males will be born so the males they're really their main job is just to mate um, and produce future queens um, or sorry mate with future queens and um, for new nests to colonize so um, they don't have a sting and they also don't collect pollen um, so they're just kind of chilling out at the end of the summer and um, moseying around then new queen will be produced um, and new queens will then emerge later on in the summer. So you can kind of see how at the start you've just got queens, that's the easiest time to learn bumblebee ID, then queens and workers, then you'll have workers and males, and then you'll have queens, workers and males and everything. Um, so it's easy to start at the very beginning of the year. Um, to start learning your bumblebee ID. Um, I'm just going to go through the six most common species that you can get in your garden um, and actually last week I had all six of these species in my garden in the one day and um, so you can see them all if you look hard enough. Species number one is the white-tailed bumblebee or Bombus leucorum. This is kind of the stereotypical bumblebee that you would think of in black and yellow so it is black with two yellow stripes and a white bum. So when we look at the ID features, we're looking at, first of all, the bum or the tail, and then the thorax and the abdomen. So those three areas um, to see kind of what features we can bring out. So this bumblebee has two lemon yellow stripes and a white bum. So that is very distinctive. Um, the queens will be quite large. They're usually one of the first bumblebees that you would see. And the workers and the males look very similar. Number two is the buff-tailed bumblebee, Bombus terrestris. And this can be mistaken with um, the white-tailed bumblebee. They are quite similar. Low, so um, queens also have two stripes and a buff-colored bum. So it's kind of like an off-white, um, which is why it's called the buff-tailed bumblebee. Um, the stripes are similar, but they're actually a darker yellow. So when you see them side by side, the buff tail is darker yellow and the white tails are very lemony yellow. Um, but just to confuse us even more, the workers of this species basically have a white tail and they look the exact same as the um, white tail bumblebee. So when we record these workers, we just have to re record them as Bombus leucorum aggregate um, because we can't tell the difference between them. Species number three is our garden bumblebee, Bombus hotorum. If you want to remember the Latin names, this one's reasonably easy. Um, hotorum, like horticulture, gardening. Um, but also this kind of tells us about one of its features. Um, so the one of the features of the garden bumblebee is that it has a really long face um, and some would say it's like a long horse face. So this is another way to kind of remember it. Um, so again, this is a similar bumblebee with a white tail, but it has three stripes. It's very distinctive. It's much bigger, much more obvious. Um, 
you, you'll really notice how big these ones are. Usually come out a bit later than the other two and not usually as common. So number four is the common carter. So this is one of my favourites because it's a ginger bumblebee, obviously. Um, they're lovely and we have a few other species of gingery colour bumblebee um, but you won't usually see them in your garden so just take it's most likely going to be the common carter. Um, so they have a ginger bum, um, an all ginger abdomen and they have some little black hairs on their thorax um, and the workers are very similar um, and these are quite commonly found in gardens and you'll usually spot them thinking they look kind of different to normal bumblebees but they're lovely. Species number five is the early bumblebee, Bombus protorum. So it's called the early bumblebee. Normally the queens aren't seen first, but quite often the workers are. It'll be they'll be the earliest workers that you kind of see. Um, so this is these last two species are a red-tailed species. Um, when we say red, it's kind of more of an orangey red. Um, but this species has two yellow bands and an orangey bum and is quite obviously smaller. The queens are definitely smaller than other queens you'll see. Um, also just to confuse us, um, the middle band in the workers is quite often missing. So if you see something with just one yellow band close to the head and a red bum, ready orangey bum, that's probably an early. Also the workers are tiny. Um, when you're used to seeing queens and all of a sudden you see these little workers are just so small. So normally if you see tiny little bumblebee it'll be an early worker. So our last species, species number six, is the red-tailed bumblebee, Bombus lapidarius. So this one, um, it's a bit more obvious, red-tailed. It is all black with a red bum. Um, really, really distinctive. Quite often, um, more common on kind of coastal areas, but also urban areas. So um, we have this a few of our nature reserves in the middle of Belfast. Um, but this has been quite a new visitor to my garden, um, but they're, they're great, they're lovely. Um, workers very similar, meals different and they have a little yellow band. Um, I haven't gone too much into meals, so it's slightly more confusing. Um, too early now, but in the end of the summer, um, meals will start coming out. A few things to look for, um, basically they don't collect pollen, so they have no pollen baskets. And also, if you see a bumblebee with kind of yellow hairs on their face, um, that means it's a male. Not all male species have it, but if it does have it, that means it's a male bumblebee. So that is your kind of short and simple guide to our six most common bumblebee species in Ireland. Um, if you want more information, um, check out our website or our social media. Um, also, National Biodiversity Data Centre have lots of good information um, on their All Ireland Pollinator Plan. It's just full of stuff if you want to find out more um, and if you want to do any surveys um, that's great. Also if you want us to kind of identify anything or you see anything your, any bees in your garden you're unsure of um, send them through to us and I'll try my best to ID them. Thanks! Bye bye!